experiences. Hi everyone, so we're back for day A, part three of the four accused in assisting Connor Chapman in the murder of Ellie Edwards. And in this video, Roxanne Matthews is again cross-examined by Katie Appleton. The court is reconvened and Katie Appleton turns to January the 5th. She said, you were again looking at accommodation in Wales. Then, at 50 minutes past 2pm, Connor Chapman texts you, bring Sig up please. Was he in your converted loft? Roxanne Matthews said, yeah, it would have been in my bedroom. Katie Appleton asked, we can see the message from you. Sorry mate, just ran the shop for gas. Be back now. Mr Chapman responds, no stress. We have you FaceTiming Connor Chapman. Why were you calling him? Roxanne Matthew said, it looks like an error. Katie Appleton asked, you then ring him at 55 minutes past 4pm. It lasts for 57 seconds. What was being discussed? Roxanne Matthew said, I'm not sure. Maybe to do with the lodge or the car. It's getting closer to the booking. Katie Appleton asked, what was a text Connor Chapman sent you at 35 minutes past 5pm? Roxanne Matthew said, I couldn't say sorry. Katie Appleton asked, minutes after, you're looking at the booking conditions with host seasons. That evening at 20 past 10, there are seven calls from Mr Chapman to you. The last one lasts one minute and 22 seconds. Was he asking if you booked anything for him yet? Roxanne Matthew said, I couldn't say specifically. It looks like maybe we were discussing the booking conditions. The court heard on January the 6th, Matthews was looking online at least in a car. Katie Appleton said, at this point, had you settled on host seasons as the accommodation of choice? Roxanne Matthews said, I'm not sure if it was confirmed at this point. There was one available earlier, but it didn't have an opt tub. Katie Appleton said, I suggest you found the accommodation, yet you needed transport to get Connor Chapman there. Roxanne Matthews says, I didn't need to. Katie Appleton asks, why was Connor Chapman ringing you at 57 minutes past 9pm? Roxanne Matthews said, it's an 8 second call. I can't quite remember what that would be for. Katie Appleton said, moving on to the 7th of January, we see at 1 minutes past 4pm, you texting Connor Chapman asking, you okay mate? Roxanne Matthew said, to see how he was, he's got everything going on with his girlfriend. Katie Appleton asked, he responds, yeah, just got up. Heavy this, haha. Heavy as in hiding from the police. As heavy as in killing Ellie Edwards. Roxanne Matthew says, no, heavy as in hiding in someone pregnant behind his girlfriend's back. Katie Appleton asked, you responded, ha ha, why not like you can get out, feel awful like, shouldn't be long, got the three of them in Liverpool, need anything, why were you feeling sorry for him? Roxanne Matthew said, what was going on with his girlfriend? Katie Appleton asked, yesterday you told us you had locked Connor Chapman in. Roxanne Matthew said, I've taken the back door key, correct? Katie Appleton said, I think you said you didn't mean to do that. Roxanne Matthew said, I misplaced my keys a lot. Katie Appleton said, there are no messages from Connor Chapman telling you I'm locked in. I can't get out. Roxanne Matthew said, I just knew I'd done that. You can see the day before, clearly he's out doing his business. Katie Appleton said, you told us yesterday there was on an occasion you misplaced your key and got in and out through the living room window. Roxanne Matthew says, yeah, we've done that before. Katie Appleton asks, the reason you're saying him not like you can get out is because you know he was hiding in your house from the police. Roxanne Matthew says he wasn't. Katie Appleton says, you knew he had killed Ellie Edwards and you felt sorry for him. 
Roxanne Matthews says that's not correct. The court heard on January the 8th there was further contact with Connor Chapman in the early hours. Katie Appleton said, what's being discussed? Roxanne Matthews replies, I'd say the lodge and the car. It's getting close to the time of booking it. Katie Appleton said, why would you speak at that time? He rings you at one o'clock. Roxanne Matthews said, I can't confirm that. Looking at the timeline, he wasn't at mine that day. You can see previously, he's calling in the early hours if he didn't have anywhere to go. Katie Appleton said, what were you speaking about at 52 minutes past 5pm? Roxanne Matthews replies, I can only say the same with the lodge and the car. She is then asked if the same is true about further calls. Roxanne Matthews says, yeah, possibly. Katie Appleton asked, was he checking the plans were in motion to leave the Wirral? Roxanne Matthews says, maybe plans to book his lodge, not plans to leave the Wirral. Katie Appleton asks, we then move on to the 9th of January. This is you booking the hire car in your name at 42 minutes past 4am. Why did you book it at that hour? Roxanne Matthews says, it's very early. I can't confirm. I do have young children. It's not rare that I could be up at that time. Katie Appleton said, you booked it in your name, yet it was for Connor Chapman. Roxanne Matthews says, yeah, that's correct. Katie Appleton says, you couldn't book it in his name because you knew he was wanted for the murder of Ellie Edwards. Roxanne Matthews says, no, I didn't. Katie Appleton asked, that afternoon, you went to your bank and deposited £900 in cash. At 42 minutes past 2pm, you spoke to Connor Chapman for 31 seconds. What about? Roxanne Matthews says, it would have been about maybe discussing the money for the lodge and the car. Katie Appleton asked, at 44 minutes past 2 p.m., you tell Connor Chapman you're at the bank. Done. Thanks, kid. Sorted past his. Just in bank. 20 minutes tops. Thanks and sorry. Ha ha. What were you thanking him for? Roxanne Matthews says, I don't know. Katie Appleton said, at 59 minutes past 2 p.m., you paid £900 into the bank account belonging to you. When David Chambers' home address was searched by police, do you recall, there was a significant amount of cash found at his address. Did that £900 come from David Chambers? Roxanne Matthews says no, it didn't. Katie Appleton asked, shortly after the deposit, £451 was paid for the lodge and a further £151 was paid to sixth. That would have left you with £298. Was that your payment for booking the car in the lodge? Roxanne Matthews says, No, my dad had given me £300 over Christmas. That was for me to get the hire car. Katie Appleton asks, Your dad also gave you money via bank transfer, didn't he? Roxanne Matthews said, Yeah, that's correct. Katie Appleton said, he pays into your account £50 on the 7th of October, £20 on the 13th of December and £10 on the 15th of December, £30 on the 16th and £30 on the 19th. The 23rd of December, 125 into your account, then another £50 into your account. That's 28th of December, £100 into your account. The same day, a further £25. On the 28th, another £100. The 28th, another 100 Then on the 3rd of January, there are payments of 100 and 200 which is a total of £1,000. Why would he give you £300 in cash when he's paid you £1,000 on January the 3rd? That's quite a lot of money, isn't it? Roxanne Matthews says, he does give me quite a lot of money, to be fair. Katie Appleton asks, had you spent that money before he gave you the £300? Roxanne Matthews says, No, I kept the 300 on the side. Katie Appleton asked, All of that £900 came from Mr Chambers. 
Mr Chapman, for you to pay the lodge and hire the car. What was left was your payment for doing a favour for Connor Chapman. Roxanne Matthews says, that's not correct. Connor paid for his lodge and the hire of the car and my dad had given me £300 for the hire car he was going to get for me. Katie Appleton said, you then booked the lodge on the night of January for Daniel Jones, Connor Chapman and their baby for four nights. You gave Connor Chapman's third number. You then texted Connor Chapman that evening. It's not been recovered. What did you say to him? Roxanne Matthews said, I'm not quite sure. Something to do with the vehicle. Katie Appleton said, we then move on to the six car rental. Mr Chambers drive you to six car rental in Speak. You collected the hire car on behalf of Connor Chapman and booked it in your name. It was a blue VW T-Cross. You collected the vehicle and keys at about 30 minutes past 5pm. You're leaving at 51 minutes past 5pm. Did you book the hire car in your name because you knew Connor Chapman couldn't put it in his name because of what he had done? Roxanne Matthews said, no, that's not correct. Katie Appleton asked, why did you tell Dominic Hughes you arrived in a taxi? Roxanne Matthews said, I don't recall saying that. You clearly see I didn't come in a taxi. Katie Appleton asked, was this agreed between you, David Chambers and Connor Chapman, in an attempt to keep David Chambers out of it, saying you arrived in a taxi? Roxanne Matthews says, no, that's incorrect. David Chambers comes in on camera onto the car park. It would be quite hard to keep him out of it if it's on CCTV. Katie Appleton asks, you recall Mr Hughes saying he had a sixth sense there was something not right about you. He was correct, wasn't he? You were lying to him. You didn't tell him the car was for your friend, did you? Roxanne Matthews said, no, I didn't. It's unusual for him to upgrade the car for someone he had a sixth sense about. Katie Appleton says, he didn't mention the upgrade of a vehicle. Roxanne Matthews says, isn't that something you could look into, the upgrade? The court heard there is then a phone call with Connor Chapman. Katie Appleton said, was that to tell him you were in possession of the keys and all that smoothly? Roxanne Matthews says, I would have been in possession of the vehicle on the way back. Katie Appleton asked, Could you tell that Mr Hughes, as far as you were aware, didn't suspect a thing? Roxanne Matthews says no. Katie Appleton asked, Was Mr Chapman telling you about his plan to leave for Wales that night? Roxanne Matthews says, I booked the lodge. I knew he was going to Wales. Katie Appleton asks, we then see the hire car activate the AMPR, Wallacey bound. He phoned you at 36 minutes past 6pm for one second. At 58 minutes past 6pm, you send him two text messages. What were the texts you sent to him? Roxanne Matthew said, maybe I wasn't far or wouldn't be long. I couldn't say for definite. Katie Appleton asks, why are you asking him to call you ASAP? at 30 minutes past 7pm. Roxanne Matthews said, I'm not sure again. Katie Appleton said, that call lasted from him to you for 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Roxanne Matthews said, that could have been about obviously it's a late time getting there, I might have been checking on that. Katie Appleton asked, was he already in the car? Roxanne Matthews said, I would assume yeah. Katie Appleton asked, we see the car activating an AMPR camera. You told the jury, as far as you were aware, Mr Chapman wasn't in a hurry to leave. Yet from you picking up the car and being activated on this AMPR camera is roughly one hour and 17 minutes later. Was he in a hurry? Roxanne Matthews says, it doesn't seem that way. He's obviously just gone when I've come back with the vehicle. He's got the car and he's drove off to his destination. Katie Appleton says, 
Was he in that much of a hurry that he left the handwritten directions you say you wrote for him? Roxanne Matthews says, no, he didn't. He didn't leave any directions behind. Katie Appleton asks, why did he call you at 43 minutes past 8pm? Roxanne Matthews said, I think he was lost and I sent him further directions at 51 minutes past 8pm. Katie Appleton says, what were you talking about in a phone call? He rang you at 28 minutes past 9pm. Roxanne Matthews says, I can only assume it's to do with directions. Katie Appleton asks, you then send him more detailed directions. Mr Chapman replies, sorted thank you with a kiss. You told him, no probs mate, kiss. Was he thanking you for helping him get out of England? Roxanne Matthews says, no, thanking me for sending him further directions and clearly getting him unlost. Katie Appleton says, Mr Chapman sends you this text. Cheeky cunts, didn't get my petals or Prosecco on ice. The court heard this is then followed by a series of phone calls. Katie Appleton asks what is being discussed. Roxanne Matthews says he was ranting over no Prosecco, rose petals. Katie Appleton asks, that's the first call. What was said in the call from you to him at 34 minutes past 1pm? Roxanne Matthews said, I'd say again the same reason. I've called him to see what's happening with the stuff. Katie Appleton says, we know later that day Connor Chapman was arrested by police at 45 minutes past 3pm. Also, Danielle Jones was arrested and her parents were informed. I suggest you quickly learned about this one on the grapevine. Roxanne Matthew said, David Chambers contacted me to let me know. He didn't mention Danielle had been arrested. Katie Appleton asked, he phoned you on five occasions, one call lasting one minute and 30 seconds. Then you phone him on four occasions. The first call lasting two minutes and 22 seconds. The third call lasting five minutes and 54 seconds. And the last call lasting three minutes and 34 seconds. Were you trying to get your story straight? Roxanne Matthew says, no, I was just panicking. Katie Appleton asked, planning what to say if the police came knocking? Roxanne Matthew said no. Katie Appleton said, he's called you to say Connor's been arrested. What's your response? Roxanne Matthew says, oh shit. Katie Appleton asks, that would take a matter of 30 seconds. Why do we have so many calls between you that last much longer? Roxanne Matthews says, obviously I was panicking. I was probably panicking about the car, talking to him about it. Katie Appleton asks, wanting his advice on what to say to the sixth car rental. Roxanne Matthews said, I wouldn't have needed his advice. Katie Appleton says, why didn't you immediately ring six car rental and tell them what's happened? Roxanne Matthews said, it was an hour or two of panicking. I was worried, wasn't I? Katie Appleton asked, you called six at 11 minutes past 2pm and reported someone had taken the hire car. We know that call was recorded. In that call, you told a pack of lies about the date and time of when the vehicle was taken to Wales, didn't you? Roxanne Matthews says, yeah. Katie Appleton says, you told them you only realised the vehicle had gone the following morning, which was also a lie. Roxanne Matthews says, the whole thing about him taking the car without my permission was a lie. The whole transcript was a lie. Katie Appleton then reads from the transcript of the call. I've gone, wow, I thought it's got to be my friend Zach. Katie Appleton asks, who was that? Roxanne Matthews says, I don't know. Just a name I made up. Katie Appleton asked, you then give the name of the person who's taken your car as Dep Chapman. Who's Declan? Roxanne Matthews said, it must have just been a name I've made up. 
The whole transcript was a lie. Katie Appleton asked, you were also asked if you had called the police. You told the operator it was your intention to do so immediately. Yet you didn't, did you? Roxanne Matthews says, I knew I didn't need to. They already had Connor with a vehicle that would be classed as robbed. Katie Appleton asks, The only thing you said which was a glimmer of truth was I'm covering my back. You're still doing it now, aren't you? Roxanne Matthews says, No, I'm not. Katie Appleton says, You were making the story up to six car rental, saying Mr Chapman had taken it without your consent to distance yourself from what you had done. Roxanne Matthews says, I knew I'd hired a car and someone was driving it without a licence. That was what I was covering for and I panicked. Katie Appleton says, we then had the release by the press of Mr Chapman being charged. Only at nine o'clock in the morning, only then is it that you contact Merseyside Police to report that your car had gone missing. Roxanne Matthews says, yeah, that's correct. Katie Appleton says, again, you made up a story of how Connor Chapman had taken your car without your permission. Roxanne Matthews says, yeah, that's correct. And that is the end of Day 8, Part 3. Thank you very much for watching.